Hello everyone, welcome back to The Simple Farmhouse. I'm Laura and I'm so glad that you're here. I can't wait to share with you some projects that I have in the works, including a little mini kitchen update and the DIY for this chandelier that I hung in our dining room. But I know that so many people have been thrown into a situation with homeschooling that they feel uncertain about. And so today I'm going to share with you our upcoming school year curriculum choices. Hello everybody, I'm so glad to be back. I took a couple months off over the course of the pandemic just to kind of slow down a little bit, reevaluate some things. but. Normally this time of year I hop on and give you an overview of which curricula we're using for the upcoming homeschool year. So I did not want to miss that with you guys. So as a little update, those of you who've been following along knew that I had a senior last year, a freshman, a seventh grader, and two fifth graders. So this year our oldest daughter graduated. She was attending Liberty University Online Academy and she graduated this spring. So we're very proud of her. Our oldest son is going into 10th grade with that same online school. And so I am only homeschooling three of our five kids this year. So as things are kind of evolving and changing around here, I'm holding on to every moment with my middle schoolers and I'm trying to have as much time with the three of them together as possible. So a lot of the curriculum that I chose is for the three of us to do together. I do have a child with some learning differences, but we're gonna do our best to help her along with the group activities this year. I do have some options that are just for her at her level, and we've seen a lot of growth this past year, so I'm excited to kind of push her a little bit this year and see what she's capable of. So let me just start with our Bible curriculum. Last year we did Route 66. They had an elementary version of the book and a high school version of the book. This year we're just going to try from the same publisher a high school version of a Proverbs curriculum. So this one is called Wise Up Wisdom in Proverbs and we've enjoyed the Route 66. We actually took two years to get through it and I just in-depth studied each of the books of the Bible. And so for two years we've been in Route 66 and we're looking forward to moving on to Wise Up. We will also be doing our history together and we are using not grass history. This is a great middle school option from Adam to us. I used this with my two older students. It comes with a lesson review option, a map book, and a timeline book. And we'll complete it together and hang it on the homeschool wall. So for reference, this is a creation-based history text. Um, some of you are particular about that, and perhaps you're not a Christian homeschooler, you're a secular homeschooler, there's lots of other options out there. I do sometimes choose um, secular-based curricula, so that's not really um, super important to me because we teach what we believe in our Bible curricula, and I want our children to be educated about all viewpoints before they leave our house. As I've shared in years past, we have a morning basket where we just keep um, readers and our Bible curriculum. That's where we sit in the morning and do um, our reading together. So that will be where history and Bible takes place. And I'll also include just some fun um, books to flip through that cover the topics in our history curriculum. I had this one last year. This was just something I picked up at Barnes & Noble. My son loves to look at these um, different battles as we cover them in history. And I forgot to include this is part of the From Adam to Us Not Grass history resource. This is stories, poems, documents, art, and architecture from world history. For science this year, I am not gonna be able to do all three students together, but I will do the two sixth graders together. And this is actually curriculum option that our eighth grader did last year. It is exploring creation with human anatomy and physiology. All of our kids have, the older kids, have already done this curriculum and it's honestly one of their favorites. So I'm excited to do this with the younger two. They're each going to have their own journal. It's one of the things that I love about this curriculum and they really enjoy the journal aspect of this. So layering together the different systems inside the human body and seeing how it all comes together with transparencies was one of the really fun pages. So my eighth grade daughter who did the anatomy book last year and loved it is going to be using the Apologia Physical Science book. This is the new 
edition, the latest edition, I actually had the older edition that we've used with our two older students. Um, and typically I just reuse textbooks, but this year the new edition came out with a student notebook. I really wanted her to have the student notebook to work with. For math, we are continuing that idea of using resources that we already have. This is what we did last year. We went ahead with teaching textbooks. So my sixth grade son will be doing teaching textbook six. Um, my eighth grader will be starting the pre-algebra. This is done on the computer, so it really helps me um, to move students around the house. They can sit at the computer, our um, computer station that I shared with you a few months ago, that was a DIY. Um, and it's been so helpful having that station to move students around the house and keep things productive and quiet. Our child with learning differences, I'm going to try her on the Math 4 and Math 5. She has been using Math UC. It's especially helpful for students with learning differences and it really helped her make huge strides last year. Instead of purchasing the next level, I was using what we had on hand over the summer. She's been doing this. We will be purchasing the next level of Math UC for her in a few months, but I just wanted her to get used to the idea of working on a computer and working independently um, and doing her math with confidence. But I like to have those extra resources on hand where they can pull from things that maybe aren't from the same curriculum, but it just helps them with practice. So this is another book that I had on hand from years past, and we can pull from this. It's just Saxon Math Worksheets. Again, this is how I kind of piece things together, and they can get extra practice as needed. One of the things that we find helpful with Math you see, this is the Alpha. Um, she's also been through the Beta textbook, is that it comes with manipulatives. This is what they look like. And for students who really need to see and manipulate, that has been very helpful for her as well. So on to language arts. My eighth grade daughter was working on some literature over the summer. This is her seventh grade literature. If you're new here to this channel, we do homeschool year round and that's not to say we're doing a full schedule year round, but there are things that we're piecing together throughout the year. This was one of the things that she did after we completed. Technically, we didn't complete it until she's finished this, but she worked on this over the summer, and then she'll be able to move on to the next grade of literature. This is BJU Press and Explorations in Literature, fourth edition. For grammar, we will be doing a combined text. It is super simple in its approach in that you are supposed to correct the sentence for the day. This is a very easy approach to addressing all of our grammar needs in a way that we can meet multiple needs at the table. Um, and also it coincides with IEW, which we will be using later in the year for our writing resource. So here's an example. This is week 11, day four, that you have a sentence to work from. The fixes, grammar notations, style, and the goal is to write out a fully corrected story. We can accomplish it in about 10 to 15 minutes a day and do it as a group. So it'll be able to function for students who are a little bit older, a little bit younger, who need my help. We're not starting right off with their writing curriculum this year because we're finishing up um, my father's world writing curriculum and then we will be moving on to IEW. But this coincides with it and it's a super simple approach that I feel like we can do with the three of them at the table. So like I said, this coming year, we will be transitioning to an IEW writing, excellence in writing curriculum later in the year. This is the older edition. I will need to replace this um, following Narnia. This is a middle school version. Um, this is not what it's called anymore, but it does um, have something to do with Narnia, I believe still. And we'll be moving into that around Christmas time when we are finished with our writing skills for today books. We've done level A and level B, and we're finishing up with level C, and then when we're done with that, we will move on to the IEW curriculum.
As with years past, we will continue to use the same vocab curriculum for spelling and vocab. It's vocabulary from classical roots. I will use this for my sixth grade son and my eighth grade daughter. And we have found this approach to learning new words and expanding our vocabulary to not only be easy to manage in the same way that fix it grammar is hopefully going to be easier to manage, but you're still learning exponentially without taking as much time to do that. My sixth grader who has some learning differences will be doing spelling UC, which looks like this. My two sixth graders will be doing my father's world again. Last year I had talked about doing language lessons for a living education. A lot of people were asking me what my opinions were on that curriculum. And I will just say that it was probably better suited for a supplemental resource. And that's how we ended up using it. I didn't use half of the book, but there were times where we pulled pages from that book to supplement what we were doing with another curriculum. Um, if I had seen that in a homeschooling fair where I was able to look at the book in person, I probably would not have purchased it. That is not to say it wouldn't be perfect for your family. Everybody has different needs, but for us, it was um, more of a supplemental style book. So we are going to continue with the sixth graders doing language lessons for today, grade six. Um, well, I'll be able to do this with the two of them together. I love that it includes art, um, it includes dictation and poetry, narration, um, but it is not overwhelming. It's that Charlotte Mason approach to language studies. For my child with learning differences, I think the Charlotte Mason approach will be a little bit more relaxed for her um, and she'll be able to push a little bit but not be overwhelmed. So we will see how that goes. Then my sixth grade daughter with some learning differences will be finishing up her Explode the Code series this year with book seven and book eight. This has been incredibly helpful for her and this is the end of the series that she's coming to. So we'll finish that. And then I did purchase a cursive book for her. I'm hoping that it will help with some fine motor skill and to teach her how to sign her name. And she has been asking to do cursive. So this is a reason for handwriting. Now, last year, I also shared with you the readers that we were doing. I have not purchased too many readers for this year. What I've done so far is pulled some things from previous years that I would like my oldest daughter to read. The first one is The Giver. And normally we do Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis, either eighth or ninth grade. Um, so I pulled that if she's interested in it. I also purchased some fiction just to get us through the summer. And I've filled up a shelf with it. This, these are a few of the things that I've purchased. This will continue to be on the shelf through the year. When they're done with a the subject, they can sit and read. I'll have some that are in the morning basket and I will continue to collect readers, but these are just a few. The Secret Lake, Beyond the Bright Sea. Now these are middle school level readers. Wish and the Wild Robot. I think they've all read this one and enjoyed the little <laughs> the little sketches that go along with it. So I think that just about covers all of the subjects. I'm looking at huge piles of books here. If I've missed anything, let me know in the comments below. I will leave in the description the exact titles for the text so that you can look them up as well as links and where to purchase them. So that's it for today. We will be getting back to the home decor videos after this one. Thanks so much for following along. Welcome again to the new followers. I'm so excited you're here. In addition, we will also be using Khan Academy's Pixar in a Box as our computer studies for this year. And for our art class, we are using XP Pen Pro tablets and learning how to animate. So those two coincide nicely. Khan Academy is a free resource that you can find online. I will leave it in the description below for you. If you found this video helpful, I would love for you to hit that subscribe button and tap the little bell to receive notifications. Until next time.